Hey guys and welcome to my fourth devlog on my current indie game project, a 2D metroidvania based on mountain climbing and exploration. So the last few weeks I was a little busy with another project, that is my master thesis which I'm about to complete in a few weeks, but that is why I took a little longer for this update, but I still managed to do a little bit of progress on my game. So last time I said that I wanted to stop adding new content and start to polish what I already have. This didn't work out 100%, uh, so while I did polish quite a few things, I still couldn't help but add some new stuff to the game, which I guess isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, until next time, I want to try again and, and really start to focus on what I already have and start to work towards this first public demo. Alright, so let's see what we've got this week. I've added another completely new area, the Cascades, which are a beautiful lush and green area, the only one compared to the rest of the world. There's clean water all over the place which you can swim around without anything. There are waterfalls which at least now you can also swim around in, so it's not only used for aesthetics but also for traversing the area. As far as story goes, the Cascades are the homeland of the Ruby people, which is the main protagonists, so your tribe and the land has basically been isolated for a long time from the rest of the mountain. Therefore the entry is also hidden pretty well, so while the area is optional until rather late in the game, you have actually all the skills available almost from the start on. So for players that find the secret early on it's a pretty cool achievement, and otherwise you will encounter more and more hints from NPCs. To wrap things up a little bit, I started on the game's menu, which for now basically consists only of a title screen, a safe game selection and the bare bones options menu. I implemented everything using Unity's old school UI system. For the particle effects, I used the UI particle effects from Unity UI extensions. For the safe games, I followed the common approach of offering a fixed amount of slots and each slot essentially creates a different set of safe game files on the disk. So the main safe game file contains all the states of persistible objects in the world, and the player's states including gem counts, abilities and items. And then there is a dump of the map's fog texture, which is used to recover the exploration state of the map. To introduce the player to the game's story, I've added a little intro sequence when starting a new game, followed by a little intro scene which is highly scripted with a little bit of player interaction. So I've implemented most of it, but I only want to show a few images of that here since the story is not at all final yet. It's crucial in any open world game to fill the world with stuff to do. Nothing worse than having a gigantic world that's basically empty. For that I created a bunch of new NPCs and I tried to give each of them some purpose, even if it's just telling lore or giving useful hints. I created this tavern for instance, which includes this shopkeeper as well as barkeeper selling some items and for that I also created this shop UI. And another example is this library. Around the world there are hidden book page fragments which you can collect and bring here to get access to books. And books basically contain lore but also gameplay relevant stuff. Collecting all fragments and therefore all books also opens another secret. Finally here are a couple of minor things I did since last time. I added controller support including dynamic input annotations based on the player's input setting. Although I designed movement with keyboard and mouse first, I of course always had the corresponding gamepad controls in mind. And playing with a controller actually feels pretty good. And most would probably say that platformers are supposed to be played with a controller anyway. I tried to add some texture to the tilesets since my vector graphic style is not ideal for tilesets and made them look very flat. I think it doesn't look too bad, but I'm still not sure if I will stay with it. And I tried to add many more alternative paths and shortcuts, which can be used more and more with new abilities. This is essential in Metroidvania level design, since we definitely don't want the player to do unnecessary amounts of backtracking.
All right, this is the current state of my game. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time when I'll hopefully be able to put out a lot more game footage or even a first player version of the game. Really excited to put out my game for you to play. Until next time, have fun and see you.